Presenting the Income Inequality Myth by Alvarism. In this video, we will explain the income inequality myth, how it has strangled the American dream, and what you can do about it. Cato is a middle class American who believed in the American dream. He worked 50 hours a week for decades. He sacrificed a lot of time with family and friends that they can never get back. For all his schooling, training, and businesses, Cato took large loans. In turn, every payment on those loans took a piece of his soul. Cato grew old working, and he reached the apex of his career. His loans were paid off, and he could finally make high income for a few good years. He was shocked to find out that he couldn't keep the rewards for his hard work. Because of the income inequality myth, misinformed Americans raised taxes on the wealthy years ago. But Cato wasn't wealthy. He lived in an expensive city, paid a fortune in loans and cost of living, and worked like a serf to earn these few good years of high income. The American dream was destroyed by manufactured equality, inspired by a myth. But how did the income inequality myth emerge? Some bad economists forgot to use their heads. They told tax-raising politicians what they wanted to hear. Now they all believe the fake hockey stick curve of income distribution. But real income distribution was flat, and there was more equality than ever. Middle class people were prevented from becoming wealthy by taxation and regulations. The hockey stick curve is horse hockey because of five errors. Firstly, the USA is huge. Some places are expensive, others are cheap. The government admits this by paying their traveling employees wildly different per diem subsidies when they travel. We can't compare income without adjusting for cost of living and purchase power parity. Secondly, not everyone works the same amount. A person who is working half as many hours should not get paid as much as a person working twice as much. We need to convert part-time workers to full-time equivalents for correct income comparisons. Thirdly, the hockey stick doesn't count all taxes. Federal, state, local, and income-related value taxes like the tax on gasoline a person pays just to drive to their job. People who earn more money must pay much heavier taxes. Ignoring taxes distorts the money that people can actually use for themselves. Also, the hockey stick doesn't count all welfare. Americans below the poverty line spend 2.6 times the income they report. They have non-cash subsidies that pay for things other people have to pay for from their own income. Ignoring welfare makes low-income people seem poorer than they actually are. Finally, the hockey stick measures household income, but houses don't make income, earners do. Households have different numbers of people and earners. Top income households have four times as many earners and twice as many mouths to feed. If they didn't have at least four times as much income, the earners would be making less money than low income houses. Real income distribution corrects for all of these errors and proves that income distribution in America is flat. Tax raising inequality advocates exaggerate inequality by 300%. Besides statistical falsehoods, what drives good inequality? There should be lots of inequality from differences in age and experience. People who have more experience need higher income to match their productivity. The baby boomer's income has skyrocketed while younger generations have stagnated or declined. Also, there should be lots of inequality from the kind of jobs and industries that people choose. But there is less industrial inequality than ever. People who do jobs that are needed the most need higher income to match the value they bring to other people. 
We have too much equality in American income. Wealth is surplus. Income is only a pathway to wealth. We need more inequality to allow poor and middle class people to build wealth and to drive people towards the jobs that society needs the most. Higher income taxes do not punish the wealthy. They kill the American dream and the pathway to wealth. It's too late for Cato. Don't let the tax raisers rob your children like they robbed Cato. Tell everybody that six trillion in federal, state, and local taxes, two trillion in regulations, and two trillion for nonprofits is enough. Americans only earn about 10 trillion per year. Why does the American civic empire need to rob you and Cato to spend as much as every American combined can possibly earn? Congratulations! Now you understand a complex economic principle that affects your family's prosperity. Learn about what you can do and own even more unprecedented discoveries in the book Economic Sovereignty, Prosperity in a Free Society. There is no book like it. Buy it today. I'm Thomas Couric. Thank you for watching our video. I want you to go to alvarism.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube so that you can share your thoughts and discover more uncommon knowledge and vibrant insights on culture and economics.